بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله A question was asked. Assalamu alaikum, Akhi. Brother, I have a question to you. Jazakallah khairan. I know a sister which I may, which I could marry, and she has a potential to be a good spouse and knows the basis, basics of Islam. And when I speak to her on the phone about Islam and its rules regarding marriage and all that, uh, and Islam in general, she likes it and listens. So she has some shortcomings, but she prays five times, although I think she is not really... She does not really know the importance of Salat and that it takes you out of the fold of Islam if you do not uh, if you do not pray. But she has a potential, I think, to be righteous. I have met very many sisters, but it wasn't written for me yet. But I am like, but I'm in two dilemmas, or I have a dilemma. I can wait for a better sister and dean, but I am in great fitna at the moment. Uh... And the other choice, of course, is to marry the sister and protect myself from sin. And, and he mentions, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in him, that also she is uh, pleasing to his eye. So this is a question that uh, comes up countless times and many of the youth uh, are faced with similar dilemmas to this uh, particular scenario. And so, with regards to that, in general, it's best to avoid uh, marrying just on impulse, number one, meaning just to be in a hurry and just quickly marry the first person you find uh, to marry. And number two, uh, that often with that, these types of marriages for these reasons just because you have sexual desires and you find that the person is attractive if that being the main factor and they're also not being strong religion involved or any other factors this is also another reason why people often divorce because number one you have to remember that attractiveness eventually will go if the hearts are not uh, in tune and there's compatibility and love in place that eventually the, the attractiveness will wear off. Now, that can be over a long period of time for some people, and some people can be a short period of time. So it's very important that you remember a third point, or a third point I want to make is that in regards to this is what about children? So meaning if you marry a sister and she's beautiful and she has what you like as far as the phys physical characteristics and traits and she seems pliable, she seems like she's workable, she you know, has some incl inclination to practice in her religion or so forth, but you have to remember that she, that there is a great potential if you're a young man and she's a young woman that she will... Um, get pregnant and you will have a child so that now that's going to be the mother of your children and that is the first madrasa this is the first place for your children to learn their deen and to learn their manners and to learn all of those things how many countless stories can we mention or better yet we can mention countless stories of people who married for all kinds of reasons and the disaster uh, in those very shortly lived marriages or experience those short experiences and then there was a children uh, there were children involved or the the they be they had children and then um the mother no longer practices and the child there goes without saying does not practice and doesn't have an islamic tarbiya so this becomes a uh something which can be devastating for the father so it's very important that when you choose a spouse as the Messenger وسلم, mentioned, for those four things that you you choose for, and in accordance with those four things, or one of those four things is her, her deen, that the Prophet وسلم, said that that is the best choice, because if she is a person who is a righteous person, a righteous Muslimah, 
you know, practicing to the best of her ability and that she's humble to accept from her husband, then you have a good chance that when you have children that she's going to take care of your children. And if something happens between you and her or whatever, or you, you die or anything, if she is a righteous woman, then there's uh, a greater potential and a greater possibility that your children are going to be raised upon righteousness. So this is very important to consider. And I know the difficulty of being single and wanting to marry and being fearful of zina. But really, Islam, when we're practicing, according to the book in the sunnah, that we shouldn't always be living on the edge, meaning the edge of sin and the ed edge of iman and the edge of kufr and the and the edge of iman so it's very important to strive that it is a striving it's going to be difficult but you have to do all those things put those barriers in place as our messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned like fasting and so forth that putting that <clears throat> before you in order to protect you from the sinfulness uh so my advice in general is to be patient and marry someone who is more suitable. That does not mean that this potential particular scenario or situation may not work. It may work, but the chances are are against it when she is very uh, ignorant of the religion and doesn't know, you know, some basic things about the importance of the prayer and so forth. Yes, you can teach her. Sometimes it's better even marrying a, a, a new Muslimah or even in some scenarios, a non-Muslima that is open and really respects you as a man and is, and is able to follow you and respect you, that she may have sometimes uh, more inclination to practice. So my point is, each scenario is different and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is best. But however, according to the criterion of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, putting the religion... Uh, first and giving greater importance to the religion is going to be for the greater and the greater good and the greater long-term success and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your affairs and the affairs of all of us easy and good and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with iman wa ihsan wa islam wa taqwa wa sabr wa hikma wa ilm wa fiqh wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad